Evening party goers. I don't know how well this is going to uh, show up because the lighting the lighting is not really great in this room but uh, what you are looking at and hopefully what you can see pretty well is a print uh, that is called The Marriage of Pocahontas and uh, it got me thinking uh, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time uh, you know first let me see I've never been married um, in my I've <laughs> just never I I've never been married because I just didn't feel like it was the thing for me. Um, you know, some people say, well, you just not met the right person, and maybe that's the case. But I will tell you that I would like to think that I am the type of person that if I was to uh, dedicate myself uh, to someone for life, and, and I, I, let me put it this way, I, I would like to think that I would have a respect for the sanctity of marriage. I, at least that's the way I feel about it. I want to talk about Newt Gingrich because... He seems to be doing fairly well in this in this race, and and I gotta tell you, there's a lot to not like about this guy. And you know, hey, listen, I love the ladies. I love them as I love the ladies as much as as much as the next guy. But you know, look, Newt swore on swore an oath to his first wife, and he was unfaithful. Okay, some people may say, well, he was young. All right. I don't, I don't, you know, whatever. Let's just, let's just give that some validity, okay? He swore an oath to his second wife. Well, you know, he, he was unfaithful to her. Now, I have to believe that the third wife, he's probably unfaithful to her. And I guess my point is, I'm having a very difficult time uh, uh, trying to support somebody. Well, I'm not having a difficult time trying to support them because I'm not supporting them. But I'm having a difficult time understanding how others can support somebody that has shown himself to have what I consider uh, zero moral compass. I mean, just no moral compass at all. And, and, and that's, kind of the, that's kind of the thing for me. It's like, if he can't keep his vows to the woman he claims to, to love and cherish and have it to hold till death do us part, if he can't keep those vows, what makes anybody think that when he takes the oath of office of the President of the United States, that he's going to be able to keep those vows? Is it because the Supreme Court Justice uh, administers that? I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know why anybody would think that somebody that has been unfaithful as many times as he has been, and under the, some of the circumstances that he has been unfaithful, I don't know how, how anybody can, can consider this man to have a moral compass. You know, and so help me out with this. In the comment section of this video, if you think that I'm mistaken, l let me know. Put your, you know, put your argument forward f for, for Newt. Because from where I'm standing, this is a guy that can't be trusted. I'm not going to give him the keys to the Oval Office when he, he's, he's not kept any, any oath in his life. Not one. So... I can't help. I just tonight on uh, Nightline, uh, one of his ex-wives is going to have something to say. I'll be curious to hear what she's got to say about this. And you know, I understand. You know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I get that. But somebody needs to shed some light on what it is. What what makes this guy tick? Because you know, from from what I can see, he is the Republican version of Bill Clinton, with a whole lot less going for him. <laughs> you know, I mean. It, as a conservative, as a Republican, can anybody honestly say they would have voted for Bill Clinton? You know, and before you say, well, Newt's a conservative, okay, I don't, I don't know what kind of conservative you are, but most conservatives that I know support family values. And even beyond that, you know, here's a guy, let me, let me give you another example. All right, he, he, he's about to publish a book. He's a book publishing machine. You know, that's how he's made a lot of his money, and that's fine. That's that's perfectly fine. If he's got something to say that people want to want to hear, you know, that's great. Be a book book publisher. Here's the thing: his his newest book had a foreword that was written by uh, a, a professor that was a, a, a very big proponent of uh, man-made global warming, and you know, Newt's handlers or advice men, or whatever you want to call them, uh, told Newt, said, they said, look, this isn't going to play well for you. See, I think initially when Newt got into this, it was all about drumming up popularity for book sales. You know, I, I mean, we live in a society where you can trade on fame. 
and Newt's star was what it was, and he needed to basically add some fuel to the star engine, uh, the fame engine, and so I think he threw in for to run for president. I think then all of a sudden he realized, oh, wait a minute, I, I, I could probably actually win this thing. All right, so he's going to bring this book out, and the foreword was written by an environmentalist. So his handler said, look, you got to yank that, and he did. He did. Now, here's the problem I have. If you think so highly of this environmentalist that you want to have him write the foreword to your latest book, but then you realize that it wouldn't be the politically smart thing to do, and you yank that, doesn't, doesn't it say something about you? I mean, it, to me it does. To me it absolutely does. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, let me know in the comment section what you all think. I mean, personally, either he believes in uh, man-made global warming or he doesn't. Either he believes in, in uh, the, uh, continuing the use of fossil fuels or he doesn't. You know, I mean, who is this guy? As far as I can tell, he's a fraud, a charlatan, a huckster. You know, I mean, if you wanted to get, if you listen, if you wanted to recharge the fame engine, pour a little, pour a little fuel into the into the tank, and keep on driving that uh, that fame vehicle down the road selling books for a living, God bless him. You know, getting a little money on the speaking service, service maybe doing a little, uh, you know, doing a little work for uh, for for some of oh, like Fannie Faye or Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. You know, a little consulting work, <laughs> you know, be a lobbyist. You want to be a lobbyist, make a little money, you know, make a little cash out of that whole speaker, speaker of the house thing. Yeah, you know, whatever. <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I can't vote for this guy. Now, having said that, if he is the nominee, I, 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 I'll vote for him. I'm not going to beat the drum for him, but I will vote for him. Only because I truly believe that Barack Obama is, is not fit to be in the office. I, you know. But that's my opinion, and it's my right to have that opinion. So I mean, I I, I, I will I will say that I would take new over Barack. Obama. You know what? And that's even hard to say because no matter how you think about Barack Obama, and, and most people who are listening to this know that I'm not a fan of his. At, at the very least, if you put Barack up against new, which one has family values? Because you know you can say a lot about Barack Obama, and I have. But one thing you can't say about him is that he isn't a decent family man. He looks to be a decent father, and he looks to be a decent husband. And that's a hell of a lot more than any of us can say about Newt Gingrich. So, there you have it. Have a good night.